a former Formula One driver is joining the SRX, and Jimmy Johnson has unveiled his future in IndyCar. Inside Lines. Hope you guys are having a great day and thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode. Let's not waste any time and jump into it. Our first story revolves around the Superstar Racing Experience, a new racing series that is coming summer 2021 on CBS. They've already announced a certain amount of drivers, Tony Stewart, uh, Tony Kana, Paul Tracy, Bob Labonte, Helio Castroneves, and Willie T. Ribs. Well, now they have announced a new driver, nine-time Formula One winner and the 2015 WEC champion, Aussie's Mark Webber will join the series next summer. Mark Webber will become the series' seventh uh, driver uh, in the inaugural entry list for the SRX. Now, currently, the SRX is the series' seventh driver. They still need five more spots to complete the 12 uh, entry list field for 2021. And now, on to our final story. And I'm pretty sure the story that everyone wanted to uh, talk about, and that is Jimmy Johnson. You know the story. He's going to be retiring from NASCAR full time at the end of this season. He hosted a test at I. MS, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the road course for Chip Ganassi Racing in an Indy car. And apparently when that test happened, people already knew what was going to take place a few weeks later. And today it was announced that Jimmy Johnson has signed a two-year Indy car deal with Chip Ganassi Racing in 2021 and in 2022. Apparently Jimmy will work with Chip Ganassi and his organization to finalize sponsorship for the two-year program so that Johnson will be able to run all of the road courses and street courses on the IndyCar schedule. Now what's interesting about this pairing is that this could also leave room for Johnson to run select NASCAR races. Remember when Johnson said he would be retiring full time, he did leave um, the opportunity of returning to NASCAR for a Daytona 500, Southern 500, Dover races and things like that for select NASCAR races. Well, he can't go to Hendrick Motorsports because they already have four teams and you cannot have a fifth part-time team. NASCAR got rid of that rule a few years ago. so. He has no room for Hendrick. Chip Ganassi, they only have two cars in the Cup Series, so they could easily put in a third part-time car for Jimmy Johnson if he wants to run selected NASCAR races. Ganassi was highly motivated to give me a chance to drive a car to see what I thought, and the experience was all that I hoped for and more. I left a good impression with them when there is definitely interest on their side, and now it's time to formalize things and get the ball rolling. So why Ganassi? Because if you remember, before this test was, was supposed to take place, Jimmy was attempted to do an IndyCar test at Birmingham, I believe, Motorsports Park, with Aero McLaren. Now, McLaren and Jimmy do have a bit of history before this year. You look back in 2018, they ran that uh, F1 NASCAR swap between Johnson and McLaren's Fernando Alonso in Bahrain. So it looked like at first, Johnson would run for Aero McLaren in the Chevrolet camp. Well, apparently this has to do with the drivers and the people around Chip Ganassi. Remember, Scott Dixon, the biggest driver right now in IndyCar. I mean, if you've just seen Dixon this season, he has just been on a tear. He is the winningest driver in his generation. And to have Johnson and Dixon, the winningest drivers in their generations, I mean, having them as teammates would be a a powerhouse, or at least a box office powerhouse off the racetrack. Not only that, but Johnson said that he has developed both an off-track relationship with Scott Dixon and Dario Franchitti, who, are, who ran for Chip Ganassi Racing for, I think, from 2008, 2009 to 2012 at IndyCar. And now Franchitti is now a driver coach at the organization. And both are very instrumental in piquing Johnson's interest in IndyCar. And Dixon, as you've seen from pictures from the test back in July, assisted Johnson in getting around the IMS road course. To pair Jimmy with the likes of Scott Dixon is quite an opportunity. They are truly in rarefied air, and I think everyone knows by now that I like winners. The goal right now is for us to run Jimmy in an Indy car for at least the next couple seasons, and we want to show people we're serious about this program. We felt it was important to get the partnership done and start putting that financial building blocks in place to make this a reality. Now, like I said earlier on, uh, Johnson going to Chip Ganassi Racing also opens up the possibility of Johnson returning to NASCAR. Johnson did say in the AP article that he's open to adding marquee NASCAR events like the Daytona 500, 
Southern 500, as well as other sports car races in the next two years. He said the Southern 500 is an easy sell because of the sponsorship opportunities, as well you uh, throw on top of that the throwback paint scheme weekend, which makes it very special to Jimmy. Uh, Johnson also said he is open to NASCAR road courses and super speedways like Daytona and Talladega. Now Johnson's run in NASCAR will come to an end, but it will also come to an end in terms of Johnson's longtime relationship with Chevrolet, at least for now, because while Chip can Ganassi runs Chevy cars in the NASCAR Cup Series. Ganassi runs Honda engines in the IndyCar Series. And if you really think about it, Johnson's entire career, at least almost Johnson's entire career, he has been representing the bow tie. And now when he goes to IndyCar in 2021, he will have to sort of put a hold on that partnership until Johnson comes back to NASCAR and runs Chevrolet. Now, honestly, I am happy for Jimmy to be able to make this announcement. Hopefully they're able to get sponsorship in line so that he's able to compete all the road courses and street courses for the next two years. Who knows? I know, you know, Johnson said at first, no, he wasn't gonna do any oval races, but with the introduction of the aero screen, Gave Johnson a bit more confidence. Who knows? He d he didn't say he wasn't going to do the Indy 500. He didn't say no. So it could be still on the table for Jimmy to run on Memorial Day weekend. And this is also honestly great for IndyCar because I think when you have a household name like Jimmy Johnson, it is for sure going to skyrocket uh, IndyCar's ratings, attendance, and overall attention uh, to have a driver like Jimmy Johnson come into your sport and for him to be around the sport as often as he wants to. Again, 15 races, that's a lot. Well, 12 races, depending on how long or changes that they're gonna be making to the IndyCar schedule in 2021, but 12 to 15 races a year, that is a lot of racing time for Jimmy Johnson outside of NASCAR and an IndyCar or an IMSA, like he said, because he also said he wanted to do sports car races in the future. So could see him running the 24 hours of Daytona, uh, could also be seen maybe running an endurance race at Long Beach and, it's honestly so cool, especially the Long Beach part, because if you remember early on, Johnson has said that growing up watching indie races or back then the kart races on the streets of Long Beach, and now he's going to be able to fast forward, what, 30, 35 years later, he's not going to have the opportunity to drive an indie car at Long Beach. It's an awesome story. Very happy for Jimmy Johnson, but he's still got nine races left in NASCAR. Obviously, for sure, he wants to get just one more win under his belt before he puts up his helmet full time in NASCAR. But that is going to conclude this episode of Inside the Lines. Guys, what are your thoughts on any of the two stories? What are your thoughts on Mark Webber joining the SRX? And what are your thoughts on Jimmy Johnson going to IndyCar with Chip Ganassi Racing? Do you think this is a good move? Do you think he should have maybe gone to Aero McLaren? And what are your expectations for Jimmy Johnson in 2021? Until next time, my name is Jack Cross from MDK Racing, and I'll see you guys next time.